fish. That would be fine. If you can just try that, that should be fine. Yeah. Ask him if, if it is if it is okay here. Yeah, I think it is okay here. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Welcome to the San Jose Temple on this Friday evening, October the 18th. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be here with all of you and to share with you the wonderful teachings of His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, which are the teachings of Lord Sri Krishna. I feel honored to be here. It's, actually, it's the first time that I've been in this temple. I was here approximately 14, 15 years ago when you had this uh, storefront and all I can remember there is hundreds of people being crowded into a small space and because there was such a, f a, f uh, a fervor of devotion it didn't matter to anyone whether they were crushed from right to left or from front to back because they simply wanted to be amongst the devotees looking at the deities and hearing whatever the discourse was so again, I thank you all tonight. <coughs> I'm sorry. I will be speaking on the Dhammadar pastimes, the meaning behind Dhammadar Vrata and Kartik Vrata. Vrata meaning vow or vow of discipline. I will speak upon it and how it can affect and influence and benefit all of us so that we can take and make best use of this particular uh, holy month. My only regret right now is I see a picture of myself in the back, <laughs> and uh, I guess there's no way in which I can avoid this. Do we have to have the picture over there for everyone to see it? Uh, is no, that necessary? Can, can we... Because it really is a distraction, and looking at myself uh, is not the most uh, enjoyable sight. Uh, I, I, I dread that I even... Thank you very much for that. Now I'm a blank screen. I've gone into the Brahma Jyoti, and everything is cool. <coughs> I must say it would have been a disaster if I kept seeing uh, my own picture. I don't know how they do it on television, because they do see themselves... But I guess they've learned the art of looking away. or, well, But then again, some of them actually like looking at themselves. So <laughs> for them, it may be a, uh, a treat. Uh, again, <clears throat> the, the point and the focus of this talk will be on how this Kartik Vrata, how this Dhammadar Vrata can increase our bhakti. Bhakti meaning devotional service, love of Krishna. There is nothing higher, better, greater, grander than the development of the heart in pure bhakti yoga. That's what Srila Prabhupada came for. Sometimes devotees get diverted into other areas, other fields. Uh, however, my focus has always been on the cultivation of love for Krishna. And as many of you may already know, uh, I have years ago recorded... Uh, there were tapes then, numerous tapes of Srila Prabhupada's books and um, many um, children grew up listening to these Krishna books, the Srimad Bhagavatam, children's Krishna book, spiritual stories, um, all of which are on the table in the back and at the end of today's talk you can avail yourself to see if there's anything there that you might be interested or you might be interested for your children. Um, it's very easy to listen to them. They're done dramatically and also non-dramatically. And you can put them, we have USBs, you can put them in your car. You can put them as, as MP3 CDs. The important point of this particular, Hare Krishna, <clears throat> this particular uh, service is to enable us, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances and worship me. Thus completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. So the idea is to come to Krishna 
and by thinking of Krishna, by remembering the pastimes, by <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> by being absorbed in the pastimes and even visualizing the pastimes. That will aid in a bit the process of self-realization. And computerization has helped that. So now we, have, we used to have, for the Srimad Bhagavatam, believe it or not, uh, we used to have 64 tapes. And it would have been very difficult for me to bring them. Now it is just in two simple CDs. And you can put them in your back pocket if you need and if you want to, you can go to the USB, which has everything, uh, eight gigabytes worth of all of them. So this is a means by which we can learn. Srila Prabhupada himself said, the easiest and one of the best means of learning is through the ear, hearing. Because when you hear something, and if that which you hear is spoken with impact and with some adroitness, then it is easy to retain. And if you retain it, you will remember it. And if you remember it, you will remember to repeat it. And that's really the whole art. It's the substance and the sum of bhakti yoga. To always be thinking of Krishna. Again, I'll repeat the verse. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances. Worship me. Thus completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. <clears throat> So for those who want to go to Krishna, or as he says, come to me, and want to be free of all of the miseries of material existence, the threefold miseries, the Adi Atmika, Adi Bodhika, and Adi Daivika, miseries which come from our own body and mind, miseries which come from other living entities, and miseries which come from the demigods or the cataclysms and catastrophes. To become free of this, we must go to a different world, the original world, the spiritual world. And in that world, there are no miseries, unless you want to call the misery of sometimes feeling separate from Krishna. If there's some separation, and you, you, you're crying out for Krishna, but in that world, one can easily see Krishna within the heart. But even that's not good enough. You want to see him in the form. And you want to interact with Krishna. You want to relate with Krishna. So uh, that is the whole idea of the bhakti process. So that we get to know Krishna, to see Krishna, to feel Krishna, and to become very enthusiastic, devoted, and enthralled by Krishna. And this can happen as we develop our love for Krishna. And that is what it's all about. So we will continue. If we can keep the talking down to the minimum or to nothing, that would help because it does distract me when I hear other speakers in the background. And if any children feel they, they have to uh, cry out or speak out, I was just told we have other rooms where shh, 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 other rooms where we can, you can take the children and they can hear the, you can hear the discourse as well. But they must not speak at the time when I'm speaking because it is a distraction to everyone else here as it is going on now. Thank you. They, they cannot speak. Otherwise, they must take in, into another room. Thank you so much. I generally, as a, as a as standard procedure, I don't speak when the children are speaking, which is a cue and a sign to please kindly take them into one of the other rooms. You can listen to the whole discourse with them, and everyone can hear it uh, as well without any diversion or distraction. Okay. This does not mean I don't like children. I love them. But I also love adults, so I want to consider myself or concern myself with everyone's pleasure. Thank you. So we can begin by chanting the Jaya Radhamadava prayers. <clears throat> if anyone play, yeah, that's going to say thank you, play the drum. Jaya Radhamadava. Kunj Bihari Jai Radha Madhava 
کنجا بیهاری جایی تو گوپی جنا بول با کیریورداری گوپی جنا Jaya Gopi Janna Vallabha Kiri Vardhadi Yasura Nandan Vrj Janna Ranjana Yat Soda Nanda No Baj Janaranjana Yamuna Thiera Vanna Chari Yamuna Thiera Vanna Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janna Vallabha Kirivara Dari Gopi Janna Jaya Gopi Janna Vallabha Kirivara Dari Yasura Nanda Nobaj Chandaranjana Yasura Nanda Nobaj Chandaranjana Yamuna Thera Vana Chari Yamuna Thira Vanna Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivara Dari Jaya Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivara Dari Yasura Nanda Nobaj Chandaranjana Yasura Nanda Nobaj Chandaranjana Yamuna Thera Vanna Chari Yamuna Thera Vanna Chari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ramu, Hare Ramu, Ramu Ramu, Hare Hare
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jai Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahansa, Paribhajakacharya, Astatur Sata Shri Shri Mad, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskan founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananda Gudi Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai. Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prem Sukho Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita. Gadad Hara Sri Vasari Goda Bhakta Brinda Ki Jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath. Shamkun Radha Kunda Giri Govardhana Ki Jai. Brindavan Dhamma Ki Jai. Mayapur Navdeep Dhamma Ki Jai. Jagannath Puri Dhamma Ki Jai. Ganga Mai Ki Jai. Yamuna Mai Ki Jai. Tulsi Devi Ki Jai. Bhakti Devi Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada's Transcendental Book Distribution Aki Jai Harinama Sankirtan Aki Jai Prasadam Distribution Aki Jai Samaveda Bhakta Vrind Aki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga <coughs> Are you strict? Oh, you're not. Okay, I feel a little better. Usually, I go over at least a half hour, so I hope you have good knees and they can bear it. But if you don't, anyone and everyone is welcome to stand up if you feel tired. No problem. <clears throat> so tonight I'm talking on, uh, oh, before I do, listen. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Yes, yeah, so tonight I will be talking about um, Damodar Vrata, Kartik Vrata. This is the month of Kartik. It starts today here. And it is considered a very holy month. In the Padma Purana, it is considered to be the holiest month of all the 12 months of the year. And the reason it is considered so holy is that Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna, has made it especially holy by granting to us more benefit in the performance of various uh, vows, vows of discipline than we would ordinarily receive. So it's kind of like, I'm sure we're all familiar, most of us are familiar with going into the office and then uh, after a week or two you get a paycheck and you do a certain amount of work, you may maybe perhaps 48 hours or 50 hours a week. And, um, and then one week you go in there and let's just say whatever they pay you, a thousand or two thousand or whatever, one week they double, your, they double or triple your, your salary. And you wonder, what is this? I worked the same amount of time. 
And here I am, I'm getting, I'm getting 5,000 this week, when normally I get either 2,500 or 1,500. What is the occasion? Well, the boss just feels good about your work. He appreciates your service, and uh, he would like to continue to encourage you to perform your service with the same enthusiasm, the same eagerness, and therefore he's just showing his appreciation. He says, but this much? You're giving me this much? Well, you have a good boss. He doesn't just take your work for granted, but he is, ex he is receiving your work with great appreciation, with great understanding, and with great affection. In other words, he's seeing you not merely as, a, uh, as one who merely increases the bottom line, but who, one who is increasing the top line as well. The top line meaning good personal exchanges, good personal relationships. When you work for a company and there are good personal relationships, then everyone enjoys the idea. It's not work anymore. It's not a drudge. It's actually a pleasure. Because you feel you're valued. Valued for your qualities, valued for your service, valued for your understanding, valued for your talents. And this is a wonderful way, and that's Krishna. You just even do a little bit, and he will give you a lot. So that is what Karta... <clears throat> Vrata and Dhammadav Vrata is all about. You get the opportunity to get more than what you're really worth, than what you really do, which is very wonderful. On the other hand, it is uh, not a good practice of devotees to be thinking what Srila Prabhupada calls fruitively. Fruit of me is what do I get out of it? What's in it for me? So that's not the idea. Uh, the idea is that we have to be thinking only in terms of, if Krishna is being so kind to me, then how can I in some way uh, show my appreciation? How can I reciprocate? How can I offer my love to him? And that's really the meaning behind it all. is to appreciate the magnanimity, to appreciate, to appreciate the, the, the lavish display or offering of his heart to us. Appreciation means, how can I serve him? How can I please him? How can I honor him? How can I celebrate his glories? In other words, we don't think of the benefit we're getting, but rather we want to, uh, we want to take this benefit that we have, that we're receiving, and in a sense use it to increase our loving service to Krishna. That's really the meaning of receiving more benefits. Receiving more benefits means to give more service and to give a higher quality of service. And that is ever increasing. For example, if you're doing this month, you normally do 16 rounds of japa. You say, well, maybe now I'll do 20 rounds of japa. Or maybe I'll do 25 rounds of japa. Uh, the question really comes down to this. Is Krishna worth the extra time the extra energy, the extra effort that I'm going to put in, is not this a good way to show, to prove to Krishna that I love him? You prove your love for someone by how much you're willing to give up, how much you're willing to sacrifice, how much you're willing to offer. So we can always say, yes, I love Krishna, I love Krishna. Well, what does that mean? It's just <clears throat> few words. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing unless and until you're ready to, as they say, uh, put your service where your mouth is. They use the expression, put your money where your mouth, but money is not involved here. Service is involved. Put your service where your mouth is. So when you say, I love Krishna, love expressed is devotional service, loving service, warm service appreciative service, service which is done with the feeling that Krishna is the greatest, the highest, the best, the most glorious person in existence. And I want to show this in my service. Now, some of you are making garlands. So when you make the garlands, you don't just string, put the needle in, take it, put the needle in, string, put the needle in, and that, that's, that's just doing work. That's just doing work. But when it becomes service, devotional service, loving service, then you are looking at the garland and you're thinking, ah, this is going to go around Krishna's neck. 
So I want to do this very beautifully. I want to make sure everything is perfectly balanced. The yellow flower here, the yellow flower here, the pink flower here, the pink flower here, the, red, the green flower here, the green flower here, and the bottom flower should be a large flower. So everything should be perfectly balanced so that when we put it around the deity, it looks so splendorous. It looks so attractive. You can take a look back there, see how everything is done with care, attention, affection, devotion. Okay? So, in my talks, I emphasize this and express that nothing should be done mechanically, indifferently, uh, robotically, uh, carelessly. Um, <clears throat> everything should be done thoughtfully, caringly, lovingly, kindly, warmly, as if Krishna were right in front of you and you're saying to him, my dear Lord, I hope you will enjoy having this garland. And you should also give a little bit of a smell. Don't smell at all. That's for him. But just make sure that it is a fragrant flower, ideally, and not a fragrant less flower, as I have sometimes seen uh, and smelled. Uh, but if you have a fragrant flower that Krishna will smell and enjoy, then that is beautiful. Sometimes... It turns out that you can't, that the temple is suffering from lack of funds, what well, they have to get, so Krishna can enjoy the sight of it. And he may not enjoy the smell of it. But ideally, he should enjoy the sight of it, the feel of it, the smell of it, and the look of it. How everything is balanced. This is what is called devotional love. You don't merely do it. You don't merely uh, engage. But you engage with your heart. Okay? So, now getting to Damodar, what does Damodar mean? Damodar is a name. And it is a name which is made up basically of two meanings. Uh, it is the rope that ties, means Damo, and Dara, around, excuse me, around the waist. So it is the rope that goes around the waist of Krishna that Mother Yashoda, his mother, tried to tie. She tried to tie this rope around Damodar. And it is a very pleasing pastime. And perhaps uh, uh, in a few minutes I can uh, uh, capsulize this beautiful pastime. It's always nice. Now, uh, why don't everybody turn around for one moment and look at the screen? You see, that's a Damodar. See, Mother Yashoda has... It's always easier to understand when we see a beautiful uh, picture as we see there. So there we see Mother Yashoda is trying to tie Krishna up. Now, why in the world would Mother Yashoda want to tie her little... He looks about three years old there. Why would she want to tie up her child? <clears throat> well, I'm going to tell the story. I know you all know it. And I'm going to repeat it uh, only because the more we repeat these pastimes, the more relishable they become. It's like food. If you just chew it a few times and you gulp it down, you don't really get the taste of it. But if you keep chewing, 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 and salivating, salivating, masticating, more and more taste is extracted from the food. And after 20 or 30 chews, you re then there's no taste left in it. That's the time to swallow. Okay? So if you swallow, as many Americans do, uh, because they're always in a rush, it's a gulp, gulp, and in like maybe five, ten minutes they finished, but they never tasted what was there. So these pastimes must be savored, they must be tasted, they must be relished, because they are not ordinary, they are not what we call mundane, they're not worldly, they are transcendental. And for us to become transcendental eyes, we need to focus our attention on them, that this is not an ordinary activity. It is an activity that is being instrumented by, engineered by the Supreme Lord for not only his benefit, but for uh, our benefit as well. Now, one day, <clears throat> Mother Yashoda was... She put some milk on the stove to boil. And then she went into the room where she churns yogurt. Her servants, they were busy doing other things, so she could not use them to do the, uh, to do the churning of the butter. In those days, they didn't have machines. They used their arms. 
And uh, so she decided that she would do the churning. Actually, it's not like this. It's done like this, back and forth. You have a churning rod, and then you have a rope, and it, you churn it this way so that uh, the churning goes back and forth. And as a result of this ac uh, back and forth action, uh, the churning uh, causes a, uh, a thickening. Uh, in other words, the yogurt she was making into butter. And while she was doing this, um, she was looking at her little son, Krishna, who was lying down, uh, sleeping. And she was looking at his beautiful face and his beautiful black hair and his darkish complexion. And his eyes were closed and he was sleeping. And she was uttering beautiful or singing beautiful songs. Because looking at his beautiful face and his little body, <clears throat> it gave her inspiration. It made her feel great affection. And after all, what is Krishna? Krishna is the supreme love God. He is pure love. He is pure bliss. He is pure peace. He is pure knowledge. Sat chit ananda vigraha. So this is Krishna. <clears throat> and Krishna is emanating all this vibration all around the place. And so she's feeling the joy, the ecstasy, the pleasure of looking at her little, beautiful, lovable son, Krishna. And then uh, what happens is that uh, Krishna wakes up. He hears her singing, and he wakes up, and he says, Mama, Mama. And she, she looks at him, and she says, Hungry, hungry. So he wants to eat. So, of course, she, she, gave him, she stopped her churning, and she sat down. She put him on her lap. And in those days, of course, she, was breast, she would breastfeed him. And again, she was looking at his, as she was breastfeeding him, she was looking at his, at his eyes, and he was looking at her. Because she was enjoying the pleasure of him uh, taking her milk. Just looking at him, it gave her great ecstasy watching him in this uh, position. And it was giving him great joy, great happiness, great pleasure to see her ecstasy, her pleasure. So it was reciprocal. He was enjoying her pleasure and she was enjoying his pleasure because his pleasure was expressed by the way he was taking the milk, just, just slurping it up. Okay? So... Then what happened is she heard a sizzling sound in the background in the next room. It's going, shh, shh, shh. Oh, the milk is on the, it's boiling. I have to leave him, put him aside. So she took Krishna and she put him aside and uh, she immediately jumped up and she went to take care of the boiling milk to turn the flame down. <coughs> So Krishna got very angry because he was just in the middle of just enjoying his, his, his food, his milk. And, and here, mother has just left me, just hungry. How could she do this? How dare? Of course, he's playing the part of an ordinary child. We have to understand what makes this so lovable and likable and enjoyable is here is the supreme Lord of the universe. He who has set in motion countless universes, countless planets, countless suns, he manifested them. He continues to keep them in, in motion, creates them, maintains them, and ultimately, when it's necessary, destroys them. He has an intelligence which we as human beings could never even begin to conceive or conceptualize. Here he is, the, the king of king of king of kings. Uh, he is so brilliant, so brainy, uh, and yet... And yet here he is, playing the part of a helpless little child, as if he needs his mother to function, to get along. I mean, can you imagine this? Think about it. Uh, look, we, we have this human body. Uh, you know, there are billions of activities going on which were set in motion by Krishna. You have a respiratory system, a circulatory system, an endocrine system, a nervous system. You have the system of the brain. Uh, you have the, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the, the assimilative system, or, uh, the excretory system. All these systems are working coordinatedly in such a way to enable us or this body to function. And Krishna has invented this, so to speak. 
So that's just to give us an idea of the, uh, uh, the mammoth intelligence. I mean, and not only did he create this incredible thing called the body, but when it gets sick, it even has the ability to heal itself. Now, computers, we can make them, we can put them together, and we can make the programs work, but when they crash, somebody has to fix it. You can, a computer doesn't, when a, there's a crash, you need somebody to uncrash it. It doesn't do it itself. It's not self-intelligent. It needs our intelligence to figure out what caused the crash and how to undo it. So, uh, therefore, this is an amazing, amazing structure, this human body. Not only this body, but the uh, elephant's body, giraffe body, monkey body. All these bodies have the uh, power to fix themselves. They get sick and they get healed. So it's absolutely amazing that uh, Krishna's intelligence, and here, the point I'm trying to bring out is a point of contrast. Here he is, having all this intelligence, when I say all this, I'm certainly minimizing it. Uh, and, con and, and here he's playing the part of a helpless little child who can't function without his mother. So at this point, he's very angry, and he's acting just like an ordinary angry little child, and he gets up in a huff, and he sees this butter pot, and he says, and he sees a little stone which is sitting on the floor near the butter pot, and he takes the stone, and he smashes it against the pot. And what happens? All this butter that Mother Yashoda had been churning, it starts flowing out along the floor. And he takes it and stuffs it in his mouth. He says, She's not going to cheat me of my meal. I'm going to eat whether she likes it or not. So he's slurping up the butter. He's swallowing it, enjoying it. And then he immediately scuttles into the next room, which is a storage room. And his little feet pitter-pattering. The butter, as I said, has flowed along the floor. So his little feet are going into the butter and making tracks. And uh, so Mother showed up. So he goes into the into the storeroom, and then there's a, a mortar there, a spice mortar, and he gets up on the spice mortar, and uh, he uh, puts his hand into one of the butter pots. You know, they hang them on the rafters, and he puts his hand in the butter pot, and, and he takes out some butter, and he's tasting it, and then he sees the monkeys are, are, are out on the periphery of the storeroom, so he says, come, 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 he's telling them. So they all come hopping in, you know, the tails are wagging, and they come over, and he's taking the butter, and he's giving it to them, and they're putting it into their mouths, and it's a real big butter party. Everybody's enjoying uh, the butter that's supposed to go to the family. So the families, who's, what are they going to drink the next morning? But Christian doesn't care. He's a very charitable child. And he's giving charity to the monkeys, and they're enjoying the charity. So then Mother Yashoda comes, uh, she goes into the, uh, the room where she had been before, and she sees the butter on the floor. And then she sees little, little f dirty footprints going here and there into the storeroom. She says, hmm, this child is very, very naughty. He has broken the butter pot, caused me all this difficulty, and then he has run away and hidden himself so he thinks I won't find him. Ha, ha, ha. So she goes looking and she goes into the storeroom. It's very easy to find him because his tracks are all over the place, which he knows. And he's, uh, she sees him feeding the butter to the monkeys. And she picks up a stick and she's very angry. But meanwhile, as Krishna is feeding the, the, the butter to the monkeys, he keeps looking anxiously if Mother Yashoda is coming because he knows she's going to punish him if, uh, uh, if she comes in. So he keeps giving like this. And then, oh, she's, he sees her and she comes r racing over to him. He jumps off the mortar and races outside. And she comes running after him with the stick in her hand. Come back, Krishna. Come back, you naughty boy. Naughty, naughty, naughty boy. And she's talking like this. Yeah, you can all take a look in the back. Some, well, that's, put on some other pictures there so they can see some of the other ones. Yeah, there you are. It can take a few moments to see. Yeah, you see. So, that's, so anyway, what happens with this is that he, uh, he goes racing and running out. 
and she's running after him, and he's passing the cows. Okay, we, we can turn back now. He's passing the cows, uh, and, uh, and then he's passing the well, and he's passing the trees, and she's running, and you know, she's a little heavy, and he's running, and his feet are going... And, and she hardly can catch up with him, but she's gaining. Actually, nobody can catch Krishna. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. Uh, every big time yogi for millions of years has been trying to catch him in his heart. But unless there is the love and devotion that Mother Yashoda is harboring, has cultivated, you can't catch him. So Krishna, seeing how, how intense, how determined, how resolved Mother Yashoda is to catch him, he slows his steps down a little and he allows her to grab his arm. And she says, you naughty, naughty, naughty boy, why did you do this? And he looks and he looks up at her and he looks very scared. He has to say, please, mommy, don't stick, don't hit me with the stick. You know, and, and, and she's looking at him and she sees that tears are starting to flow down. Again, this is the supreme lord of the universe. And he's enjoying this whole pastime. He's playing the part of a little child. And what he is doing is he is inducing. This is one of the reasons he comes to this world to induce more and more and more love in his devotees. So Mother Yashoda is looking at his face and the tears are streaming down and he has this dark black calyrium that they wear, the little children they wear. And this, nowadays women wear this, they call it mascara. And when they cry, it runs down the cheeks and you see these streaks. It looks like, like a rivulet of, 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 of dark, dark streaks. So Krishna's got all these dark streaks on his cheeks and, and he's crying and, and he's... You know, whimpering like that and she, so she sees and she becomes a little affected by his tears she can't she can't take the stick to him of course she wouldn't hit him hard she just give him a little tap like that just to let him know that that is naughty unacceptable behavior so she threw the stick away and she says you are a naughty naughty boy and I'm going to punish you for this <clears throat> and so he's wondering how she's going to punish him and so she picks him up and she takes him back into that storeroom where that mortar is. The mortar is, you saw the picture before. It, it's kind of like an hourglass, you see. It goes kind of like that. And uh, she decided, she said, Krishna, all you do is get into trouble. Naughty, naughty, naughty. You don't follow my instructions. You don't obey me. And you will never grow up to be a good boy. And I'm going to make certain that you become a good boy. Because that is my duty, to make certain that you will not become uh, a, a, a rascal, you will not become a, a criminal, you will not become mischievous. You're going to be a leader, and I'm going to treat you and train you to become good. Here, I mean, this, think about this. Here, we're talking about Krishna, the supreme lord of the universe, the inventor, the source, the cause uh, of all causes, and the cause of all morality, the cause of all ethics, the cause of all etiquette, and she's going to teach him how to be a good boy. Think about that. It's hilarious. It's very funny. Because she's not thinking of him as the Supreme Lord. She's just seeing Krishna as her little lovable, helpless, dependent boy. And she's there to teach him a lesson, teach him to become a, a good, upstanding citizen, so that when he grows up, everyone will respect him. And that's what a good mother does. She teaches her child to be uh, upstanding and courteous and kind and thoughtful. So um, she said, you are not going to have any freedom today. I'm going to tie you up to this mortar so that you don't get away. And you're not going to play like you want, breaking butter pots and causing me all this difficulty. So she immediately looks around the place. She sees a big rope, maybe 10 feet, my estimation. And she takes the rope and she ties it. You can all look around the back because he's got the picture on there now. Just have a take a look. You see that? So she's taken the rope and she's tied it around the mortar. Okay? And then she's tied it. Now it has another part to it. So we'd all turn this way again. Uh, 
And it has to go around Krishna's waist so that he will be tied. This is a heavy mortar. And he, he, maybe he weighs, who knows, 25, 30 pounds. And the mortar weighs more than he does. And the result will be is that if he tries to move, well, he won't be able to move it. And he'll be stuck there. And he won't be able to play with his friends. He won't be able to play with the monkeys. He won't be able to do any of these things. So he's, she tries to get the rope tied around his waist because that's what Damodar means. You tie the rope around the waist. That's the meaning of the word Damodar. And she, it was about two inches too short and she couldn't figure this out. How could it be two inches too short when the rope was about 10 feet and there was, should have been extra? She says, this is very, very mystical. How can this be happening? So she had a few servants, they were in the background. They said, bring, bring me another rope. So she went out and they brought another rope and he t- she tied it onto the rope which was already tied. She made a knot, made another knot and then she took it and as she brought it around to tie it to the mortar so that he wouldn't escape, it's again two inches too short. Oh, what's going on here? This rope, we have 20 feet of rope and now suddenly it has shrunk to just about two, three feet this is impossible. How is this happening? And some of the maidservants were there. They're all tittering. <laughs> you know, they're laughing. So, so anyway, what happened? She said, bring me some more ropes. So they brought more and more and more ropes. Every time she's tying and she's trying, again, shrinking two inches, two inches. So the, she looks at the maidservant. She says, what, what, what kind of ropes are these that they continue to shrink and they cannot go around my son? How will I ever teach him this lesson that he has to learn? And Krishna, he's looking, wondering, what's going on? He says, what's happening? As if he doesn't even know what's ha- uh, why this is happening. It, it, this is also very hilarious. He's just looking like this, you know, kind of like a confused child, like, like this. Well, who's doing this, mother? Meanwhile, he's the one who's doing it. But he's playing the part of a, of a little ignorant child. And this is, he's getting so much pleasure. But the pleasure is internal. It's interior. It's within him. So he's getting so much pleasure out of this. And he's also getting a lot of pleasure out of watching Mother Yashoda strive, try, with all her effort, her determination. Perspiration is flowing down her face. There's a little chaplet, you know, that women wear on the top of the head, and the flowers are coming off her. And she's, <sighs> you know, she's breathing heavily, and she doesn't know what to do to get this child tied up to the mortar. Finally, uh, she tells her maid servant, bring one more rope. Uh, uh, this time I'm going to do it. I've got to do it. So she brings one more rope and then ties it against all these other little shrunken pieces of cord and gets it tied and slowly she brings the rope around and Krishna's thinking, my dear mother has tried so hard. This is her love. This is her devotion. This is her attempt to try to make me into a good boy. How can I allow her to suffer any further? So as she brings the rope around, it's this far away. Then it gets a little closer. Oh, maybe I'll be successful this time. Gets a little closer. Oh, a little closer. Maybe a little. It's touching. And I have some slack. So she takes it and she ties the knot. And another knot. And another knot. Ah, and all the maidservants are clapping. Hurry bowl. Hurry bowl. <clears throat> and they're all so happy. Finally, Krishna got tied up. And Krishna, he's just looking like this as if, why are you tying me up like this? I want to play. He said. So anyway, she says, now you stay and be good. And if you don't, if you behave yourself, then I won't tie you up again. She leaves the area. So little Krishna, yeah, he's acting very angrily. But on the other hand, he's enjoying this so much to see his mother's love. Remember, uh, there are different rasas in devotional service. The, the, there's the neutral rasa <coughs> of loving Krishna in awe and reverence. Then there's servitorship where you are like Hanuman. He was the foremost of servants. And then there's friendship such as Arjun is the friend of Krishna. Actually, yes. Or some of his little playmates Subala, Stoka Krishna, 
uh, it's a little different, a little more playful. Uh, and then you go to the Vatsalya Ras, which is the parental uh, relationship. The parent feels uh, protective. That is her rasa. She feels that, the, the, actually doesn't know it's the Lord, that this child needs me. The child can't get along without me. And, the, and it is my duty, it's my business to protect my child from external <clears throat> onslaughts, from any difficulties, problems, tribulations, uh, illnesses, or whatever. I must protect my... So here she is, she's in this rasa. And her only thought is to make sure that her son is well protected. And well loved as well. She gives both. So Krishna is looking outside, and he sees two trees. They're called twin Arjun trees. <clears throat> and he looks at those trees, and he says, Yes, Mother Yashoda has bound me up, because she said I was naughty. But now I'm going to do even more mischief than I did before. She thinks this mortar can bind me. Ha! He's holding up all the planets. So what he does is he begins to drag the mortar outside the storeroom towards the tree, two trees, and he walks in between the two trees, and what happens is that the mortar goes crossways, and it hits the two trees. And as Krishna drags, what happens is that the mortar pulls, is pulled and pulled, and it causes the two trees to come down. There it is. You can all turn back down. See the picture. <clears throat> okay? So he, he brings the trees down. There were some little boys who were watching, and they come down, and two demigods come out. That's a whole other story, which I won't get into. We don't have enough time for it. But Nalakuvara and Mani Griva, who were two demigod rascals, who were the sons of the treasurer of the demigods, Kuvera, and they were sporting in the, in the Mandakini, Mandakini, Mandakini River uh, with these girls in a manner which was really unspeakable and un, unworthy of their position as the sons of Kuvera. And he, Narada Muni came along and he punished them because when he was there, they were, had no clothes on and they, they didn't even respect him and because they had lost their sense of, of, of ethics, their sense of morality, he cursed them. Actually, the curse was a blessing. He cursed them that for thousands of years you will become trees. And those were the two trees, the Ar twin Arjun trees. But at some point, Krishna will liberate you and then you will eventually go back home, back to Godhead. And that's what happened. They came out of the trees and uh, they prayed to Krishna, they thanked Krishna, and they were completely purified by this austerity. Remember, they're in the trees. The soul is fully recollective, fully rem <coughs> remembering that they are sons of Kuvera, that they have committed an offense against the Supreme Lord, and that they have been punished, and the punishment becomes a form of austerity, a form of penance, a, a form of paying for the mistake that they made, purifying them, mortifying them, cleansing them of the mentality of just do whatever you want to do, rather than doing what Krishna wants you to do. We are here to perform activities which are in sync with Krishna. Krishna says, he who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. Therefore, one should understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulations of the scriptures. Knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be, what? Elevated. So, Nalagriva, Manigriva and Nalakuvara were transformed. They went back to the heavenly planets, and from there they would go. This would be their last life. Krishna said that to them, and they would go back home, back to Godhead. And then, as a result of the big, uh, the tremendous... Uh, crash of those trees, the cowherd uh, men and women who were far in the background, they heard that, and they all came running. 
And they came running to see what was happening, and they saw Krishna. He was standing there, uh, tied up still to this mortar. And they said, oh, there must have been some demons who came and pulled that tree down. Oh, our little Krishna is always getting in trouble. The demons are always trying to kill him. But fortunately, luckily, Lord Narayan is protecting him. Lord Narayan, yes, no, he was protecting himself. But they don't think, they don't think like that. They're just thinking, Lord Narayan, our child, he, he must have done so many wonderful acts, so many pious activities in his past life to be able to get this foremost mystical protection of Lord Narayan. We are so fortunate. So their good fortune is that Lord Krishna is arousing, awakening, stimulating, agitating their hearts so that they feel more and more and more love for Krishna. And they want to serve him more. They want to give more to him. So, of course, they pick him up and they hug him. And then the, all the, uh, the village, villagers are there. And, and Mother Yashoda says, are you okay? Did the demon hurt you? Uh, are you all right? And he says, oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then Nanda Maharaj picks him up. Are you sure you're okay? Oh, yes. And they hug him. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Uh, are you okay? He was just confirming what I was saying. So. They don't speak, so they have to do it that way. So uh, anyway, the, uh, so then they said, okay, Ch Krishna, let's all, uh, let, let's sing something now that Krishna, uh, uh, let's celebrate that Krishna has not been harmed. So they began singing and clapping their hands, and then Krishna immediately started dancing. So we have to have the children out of there or the door closed so that we don't hear that. Please, thank you so much. So Krishna then began dancing up and down and clapping his hands and everybody began clapping and dancing and, and it was a wonderful, uh, beautiful uh, moment in which all the residents of Vrindavan felt so relieved and so, felt so comforted and so consoled that their little Krishna was unharmed by this terrible demon who obviously pulled him uh, and pulled him through those two trees and just see we're so protected by Narayan. So that's the Damodar pastime. And uh, it's celebrated. And it's celebrated primar primarily because uh, Krishna, he awakened and aroused and stimulated so much love in the heart of Mother Yashoda. And that is, we need to have the door closed, please. Thank you. Uh, and that's, that's the... Uh, and, and that's the, uh, the meaning behind this. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not merely just a, a, an event of of, or a happening for children, but uh, it is, a, it is a, a major event in which how Krishna intensifies and arouses and stimulates the love of his devotees. Thank you. Yeah, they have to understand that this is not for that. So this is how Krishna interacts uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, as they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. I'll say that again. As they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. So that's the, 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 the idea. To the degree to the extent that you offer your love to Krishna, to that extent, an even greater extent, does he reciprocate, does he respond. I say greater extent because Krishna is not a miser. We may be miserly sometimes, but Krishna accepts the smallest amount of your love in the form of service. In, the, in this case, Mother Yashoda, what she was doing... <clears throat> What Mother Yashoda was doing is she was trying to teach her child to be a good child, to be a good boy, to be very loving. This was her business. So, uh, therefore, Krishna was appreciating her efforts to train him to be a good boy, a boy who would be respected and honored and ultimately and ideally glorified. So, how he responded is he increased her love for him. Now, what is the result of Krishna increasing his love uh, in our hearts? The result is, is that we feel tremendous joy. 
The joy becomes or the bliss becomes or the rapture is a better word. The rapture becomes ever increasing. Now rapture can manifest itself in perspiration. You can become stunned where you cannot even talk. You may, as I said, perspire. Or you may, the hairs on your arms or on your neck may go up. Or you may tremble. How many of us have read the Chaitanya Charitamrita? How many of us have read CC? Yeah. Well, some of you have. Well, the symptoms that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested are these ecstatic symptoms. They are devotional symptoms. So sometimes the, the voice becomes choked up. You can't talk. When Lord Chaitanya was trying to say the word Jagannath, he was so choked up that all he could say was he, he was choked. He could, sometimes some of us may have had the experience of where you, you're so overcome and overtaken by grief or of some sort that you can't speak. Like <laughs> All you hear is your tears, cries, and you can't even speak. And sometimes the complexion becomes very light because you're stunned. Uh, so th these are all, and the weeping, Lord Chaitanya would cry so intensely that, that it would spread squirt out and people would get squirted by his tears and they would rub those tears all over their body, all over their head and others would see the tears on their body, They'd take those tears and rub them on their own body because they were sacred tears, holy tears tears which would bring more joy happiness, fulfillment, satisfaction right? you, you agree? yeah he agrees Okay. <clears throat> I'm glad now, now I know I'm taking the truth. When a child who's innocent and sweet and uh, has no Im impurity and he shakes his head that what you're saying is correct, I feel completely relieved, completely relaxed. There may have been a few skeptics here, but I don't care anymore. This child, he agreed. <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway, getting back, he's also very intelligent. You can see how he looks with his eyes. So most of the children I see of the devotees are all, they're all too intelligent. Uh, they've ta America is robbing the intelligence from India. <laughs> and that's how the, all these big companies are coming up with Indian intelligence. It's serious. All this computerization that we have, it all comes from top-notch brain, brain power. So um, anyway, um, that's because were, many of them have been brought, raised in a proper way, uh, in a disciplined way, in, in, a, uh, in a mature way. Uh, manner. They, they're taught manners. Now the American kids, they're taught they can just do anything. They throw things at their parents. Uh, they kick their parents. They spit. They do anything. They stay out late. They go to these parties where they get drugged. I mean, it's, the, the, that's why we're having all these problems in this country because what's happened is the morality is sinking and it's reflected in how the country is running. So, getting back to our point, <clears throat> Damodar or Kartik, it's a month in which we can make a lot of advancement. But as I've already said in the beginning, that I'll be finished in just a few moments. So, uh, in the very beginning, the main point is how we can give Krishna more pleasure, not how I can do 64 rounds and tell everybody in the block that, you know, I chanted 64 rounds, give me a big applause, raise the flag, and, and, and everybody should shout, uh, go on the internet, I chanted 64 rounds, yes, let it go viral, that so-and-so has now chanted. This is not the purpose of, uh, uh, of these vratas, so that uh, to, to become a big egotist. Actually, it's between you and God. And if you keep it between yourself, for example, there are husbands and wives here. You have intimate secrets. You don't go around blabbering to all your friends and, and, and putting it on the internet. It's not, this is, this is private business. It's sacred. It's quiet. It's between you and uh, him and her. Similarly, your relationship with the... Some, a lot of people don't understand this, and I want to make it very clear that if you want to really get benefit, keep your mouth shut. One great, great prophet, great, great sage called Jesus Christ, he said, uh, he says, you should be so internalized that your right hand should not even know what your left hand is doing. Or go into a closet and just talk it out with God. But don't shout it out to the streets and to the heavens. Your father, he's not hard of hearing. Even if you, you know, he doesn't wear a hearing aid. Uh, your father in heaven, he knows exactly what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're willing. Just with your heart, just express your feelings that way. And instead of saying, I chanted 64 rounds, 
Better to go into your closet and say, my dear Lord, I could not chant even one round if it were not for your... Shh. If it... We have a class going on here in case anybody doesn't know that. <laughs> so, uh, the... the uh, I already forgot what I was about to say. What was the last thing I said? Yeah, okay, yes. <clears throat> so you go into your closet. It doesn't have to be a closet. It could be a room, too. I mean, I don't want, in case any of you have claustrophobia, I don't want to create an attack. <clears throat> so uh, you go into your closet or your room and you say, My dear Lord, yes, I chanted 64 rounds, but it's because you are worth it. I gave so much time. I see so much effort. Stop the children. Put them down. Sit down. Uh, I've taken so much effort, so much time. But you're worth it, Father. You're worth it. You're worth more. Hundreds and hundreds of rounds. But because I have so little devotion, so lack of dedication, that I chanted only 64 rounds. Instead of, instead of maximizing, you minimize. This is humility. I, I did nothing. And yet... The 64 rounds, I could not do even one round if it were not for your mercy. It is your mercy that is allowing me, mercy that is permitting me, mercy that is enabling me. I couldn't do it. So I'm thanking you so much that I can do something to show you that I do have some little bit of love for you. 64 rounds took him eight hours to do, and he's saying, little bit of love for you. He's not magnifying this. He's minimizing because he feels God is so great, so glorious, so wonderful, so amazing that he deserves so much more. Does he not? He's feeding you. He's clothing you. He's sheltering you. He gives you medication. He gives you a job. Never think that it's because I'm intelligent, all this is happening. He can withdraw your intelligence in one second and you'll be out of a job. You won't have anything to eat. You'll lose your glasses and everything will fall apart. He's doing that right now to somebody, believe it or not. Earthquakes are coming someplace. Tor tornadoes are someplace. Floods are someplace. Look, you see it in the news all the time. Somebody who thought it was going on forever and it would continue has found out that is not so. So, the essence of today's talk is let us always count our blessings. Let us give as much as we can to Krishna. Let us never think that we are giving enough to Krishna. And when you think in those terms and you pray to the Lord, my dear Lord, please enable me, help me, please assist me to give. I want to do more for you, but I'm so limited. I'm so helpless. My devotion is so small and so insignificant. This is the way Haridas Thakur thought. So I beg you, please help me. I can't do it without your mercy. By my own endeavors, worthless. By my own endeavors, failure. But with your mercy, with your aid, with your abetting, with your assistance, success. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. All glories to Lord Damodara Ki. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Thank you. Are there any... Uh, the, <clears throat> Thank you so much for your kind uh, response. Does anyone... I don't even think we have time for a question. No? Yes? You have time? No, no time. I got the, the final word. Okay. So I'm sorry, but I will be here tomorrow morning. I'll be giving a Bhagavatam class. <clears throat> and uh, if you have some questions from tonight, I will answer them tomorrow. Uh, and b before you leave, I hope you'll all peruse the table which is in the back, which has all my MP3 CDs of the many books of Srila Prabhupada that I narrated, both dramatic and non-dramatic. I also have them on a single USB now, my entire collection. And so those of you who would like to get that, you can put that in. You can download it to your iPod, and you can have it wherever you go in your car. And so you can always be surrounded with transcendental sound. So please avail yourself, and now we can begin the Arctic. Thank you so much for being so receptive.
Un bon. Ok. En Hare Krishna. Everybody, you can sit down um, after you offer the lamp to um, Radha Madan Mohan. Namha Mishwaram Sachidanan Darupa Lasat Kundalam Gokule Brajamana Vamana Padam Vishtam Vatanta Todruta Gopya Yashoda Bialukala Devamana Karam Ritama Tyanta Toduta Gopya Tamuhu netra yukvam vijantam Karam boja yukme na shatanganetam Muhu shvasta kampatri re kanta kanta Stita gaiva tamodaram bhakti bhakta Muhu shvasta kampatri re kanta kanta Tire kanta kanta Sita graivam damodaram bhakti batam Iti driksha lila bhiranandha kunde Svaghosham nima jantam maghya payantam Tadhiye shitatnye shubhakta jitatvam Punar prema tastam shatavriti vande Tadhiye shitatnye shubhakta jitatvam Punar prema tastam shatavriti vande Varam deva moksham na moksha vadim 
Param Deva Moksham Na Moksha Vadimba Na Chanya Vrene Ham Varesha Da Pipa Param Deva Gopala Pala Sada Mema Nasha Vira Stamki Manya Idam Teva Purna Gopala Pala Sadha Mimana Savi Rastam Kimanya Idam Timukam Bojam Matyantanila Vitam Kunta Lies Nick the Rak Taisha Gopia. Idam Timukam Bojam Matyantanila Vitam Kunta Lies Nick the Rak Taisha Gopia. Shumbitam bimba rakta daram me manasya virastam maram lakshalabai. Mohushum be thumbim barata daram me manasavira stambaram lakshalabaye. Amo Deva Damo Darananta Vishnu Prasida Prabho Dukha Jala Dimakna Namo Deva Damo Dharananta Vishnu Prasida Prabho Dukha Jalabdi Magnam Kripa Drishti Vrishyati Dinam Vatanu Grahane Shamama Gyame Dakshi Dusha Padrishti Vrishyati Dinam Vatanu Grahane Shamama Gyame Dakshi Drisha Kuvedatma Jau Bhakta Mutai Vayatva Taya Muchita Bhakti Bajau Kritaucha Kuvedatma Jau Bhakta Mutai Vayatva 
राम राम हर हर krishna hare 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 rama hare rama ram ram hare hare krishna krishna hare 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 rama hare rama ram ram hare hare दर राधे जय राधा मदन मोहन राधा मदन मोहन राधे जय महाप्रभु जय महाप्रभु महाप्रभु जय महाप्रभु जय लक्ष्मी नारसिंह जय नार हरि जय लक्ष्मी नारसिंह जय नार हरि जय भक्त प्रहलाद जय भक्त प्रहलाद भक्त प्रहलाद जय भक्त प्रहलाद जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो टुमारो दे विल बी आरती एट सेवन थर्टी फॉर श्री श्री राधा मदन मोहन प्लीज प्लीज कम and also at 8 o'clock there will be damodar ashtakam since na namaste narasinghaya namaste narasinghaya Oh, 
भगवान की भक्तराज प्रहलाद महाराज की शील प्रभुपाद की समवेत गौर भक्त विंद की निताई गौर प्रेमानंद हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू ऑल फॉर कमिंग एंड ज्वाइनिंग अस फॉर द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ कार्तिक एंड अ बिग राउंड ऑफ अप्रॉस टू द स्पीकर ऑफ द डे टुडे अमल भक्त प्रभु Prabhu has uh, narrated lot many uh, spiritual books. So now uh, devotees are always uh, requested to buy books and read. But sometimes when you are traveling and spending most of your time in car or working at office, these kind of uh, audio books are very handy. And while you are working, you can let it play. While you are driving, let it play. And uh, it's a a very big contribution to. Uh, to to the textbook which shila prabhupad provided and prabhu has over uh, as there's a big deal going on uh, i think uh, he has uh, narrated lot many uh, books and created audio books and the package price is if you just buy it together everything it's around 150 dollars which is a steel deal so anyone who wants to uh, who are more uh, shruti kind of people and they get little challenge in standing sitting in front and reading books for long uh, that may be a good idea to start generating interest and then get into books so please uh, see maharaj there uh, and also uh, we would like to request all of you uh, to come for the entire month if possible every evening we'll have this damodar ashtakam which is free you can come uh, take the ghee lamb and uh, offer to the lordships so as hansa priya announced uh tomorrow again we will have that in the evening and every day so please come also there is prashad outside so you can get that and uh there is a if you want to get enabled into our mailing list uh please let us know there are uh, more details about announcements about more events we'll let you know so uh there is prashad outside and one more thing it's a very auspicious month so if you want to uh, donate anything it's a very what you do anything whether you do chanting it multiplies if you uh, do any charity it multiplies if you chant it multiplies so take this opportunity of 24 hours every day and get this multitude advantage okay thank you so much so uh, the cd is by his grace amal bhakta prabhu uh, this whole set is for 150 dollars and there are also individual cds for 10 dollars 15 dollars so you can just take a look at all the different books available and it's very nice to have it in your car or on your phone and be able to listen to all these books uh, so there are the different prices and there's also a full set that is available uh, hare krishna okay what we will do is like very organized uh, devotees we'll try to first take honor prashad towards the left side so in case you know we have uh, efficiency in time while cleaning it also uh, prabhu will be giving morning class tomorrow and also in evening so please come and take his association thank you so much hari krishna okay and uh, devotees uh, uh, whosoever wants to clean the temple after the prasad 
प्लीज कॉन्टेक्ट रामानंद सखा प्रभु हरि संकीर्तन प्रभु वी नीड एटलीस्ट फाइव वॉलेंटियर्स इफ यूर लिस्निंग थैंक यू for those who are online thank you very much for joining us that concludes our program for tonight i will be stopping the broadcast in just a moment thank you again for joining us we will again be going live tomorrow starting 7:30 am us pacific time hari krishna hari krishna